Terminator 2, The Godfather Part 2. It's not always easy to make a sequel that's better than the original. But 533 is attempting to do just that in the first sequel to their amazing Tiny Trainer line. here guys today we got the tiny trainer v2 we're gonna see if this thing is better than the tiny trainer v1 this doesn't completely make it obsolete the same way that the still non-existent playstation 5 did to the playstation 4 because both of these are available in stock and there may be a reason why you still want one of each now it does come with a number of quality of life improvements including a pop the top style canopy where you can actually service your quad get to the internals even with the dual layer you have a good bit of clearance on here you can easily get to the usb port and the hd0 update ports so you should have enough room hopefully to put the leds on top this is just a little warning in case you get a little bit lazy like i did this little pop the top functionality i demonstrated now what i did not do right after that was secure the screws all the way tight i just put it back down in place like this if it's loose and a hard crash like i I had it's going to push this down this is going to act like a tiny little guillotine hey, give him the chop, Doug. and i'm not talking about his foreskin either and it slashed my mippy cable a few of these tiny delicate strands are cut and so this is no longer good i don't think that is necessarily a 533 issue that is a me being lazy issue i paid the ultimate price for this don't do as i have done the designs over at 533 are really leading the industry when it comes to racing i don't think that if you have a fleet of v1 tiny trainers that you have to immediately go out and replace them with v2 but if you're shopping to build your first tiny trainer there's pros and cons of each i've never had to replace a single bottom plate even flying at the night spot i've never broken one but i have had a few where i ground the arms down and one of the best things about the tiny trainer is the excellent motor protection so once you grind those arms down oh do i risk banging up those tiny turner motors in the case of the v2 i could just do a quick arm swap and be back in the air and the tiny trainer has been one of the most significant drone releases of all time that's much more than the sum of its parts not just because it created a much more accessible and professional looking micro drone than we'd seen before but because of the high collection of prize purses available for racing in its tiny trainer spec league meaning if you use the frame motors and props you can enter a variety of races around the world win thousands and thousands of dollars in prizes and hang it on your wall for decoration when you're not using it the upgrades to the original formula addresses a number of points of feedback from the community this is what you want to see from a company not just making an update for the sake of selling a new model but gathering and analyzing the feedback and making a new design to address those. The list of improvements includes single plate to individual arms. Before, if you broke an arm, you had a long, arduous task of removing all the components off the old frame and painstakingly transferring them to, to a new one. Forget taking your wife on a date night. You won't have the money after buying new parts. Not that you would have the time anyway as you'll spend your entire evening on the bench fixing and even if you did have both of those your hands would have too much carpal tunnel from the plethora of screws you had to change leaving them much too achy to give your wife so much as a foot rub have you ever given a foot massage shit yeah got my technique down and everything i don't be tickling enough now you can't manage with a single screw remove an arm replace it and boom back in business marriage saved thinner arms the individual arms are much more aerodynamic i couldn't put my finger on why the v2 seemed to 
fly so much better in the air. And after discussing with 533 co-owner and lead engineer Mondo, he pointed me at this secret and it does indeed feel juicy. The ability to access the stack before you had to cut four zip ties and remove four screws to so much as change your tune in beta flight and access the USB. Now you can take off that top with just a pair of screws. No more fumbling like you may have done in the past with some mysterious hooks. Next, less need for 3D printed parts. I'm on my 10th 3D printer, so this isn't so much a big deal for me since I've already graduated to Prusa printers, AKA God mode. But to those that haven't, not having to deal with prints and instead injected molded fancy goodness, it's a bonus. And lastly, the canopy itself is also much stronger and more screen accurate to the Racer 4 that inspired it. The Tiny Trainer has been one of my favorite flyers over the last few years. Wasn't meant to be a toothpick. With a higher power to weight ratio and the lower top end speed, those things are very bouncy and they don't really give a good representation or good practice. It was meant to be, like the name suggests, a training tool for racing at other sizes. The muscle memory you cultivate while flying translates 100% to any track. Not to mention that even if you're not a racer, you can enjoy one of these. The more polished looks than any other micro drone out there, the crash resistance and the backyard driveway or park fly ability of something so tiny and so quiet means that you won't be bothering the neighbors. And a happy neighbor means that you just might get invited over the next time they're barbecuing. You can thank 533 if you do get a hand on one of those juicy chicken legs. It was definitely a blast to fly. Like I never flown tiny trainer before. I tried a couple of packs, but I built this V2 with a good flight controller and uh, it was a blast to fly for three packs until I sort of like a broken arm and motor and um, yeah, I was, you know, going a little bit too fast over concrete. That's what happens sometimes, I guess. Good thing it's replaceable arms. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine having to replace the whole thing? Yeah, yeah. It's still a little bit of pain in this replace because of the LEDs are, you know, connected to here. You need to take off the guard still a little bit you know oh, not true. as easy as i wish but i guess there's no way around so but you're gonna fly some more oh yeah i'm gonna build like three or four of them that was really fun to fly i don't know why like how do you explain why it's fun to fly <laughs> i really like, like them like when you fly yeah. you don't see how big your drone right it doesn't make sense to me you can sort of feel it like it's sort of like a freedom spec speed but when you need a corner it's like instant cornering sometimes it feels like freedom spec speed so i'm thinking it's gonna like drift or something and then I like pre-turn a little bit too early and then like I see a pole like, like very fun to fly now I'm gonna build like a couple more analog and maybe one or two HD zero and at Texas Winter Nationals I flew success I flew freedom spec and I flew tiny trainer and my tiny trainer times were actually faster than all of the other ones I even took away $150 in prize money for the open sportman class. Anytime the 533 releases a new product, they're invariably going to go in and out of stock as people gobble them up faster than Pac-Man in that little maze. But they have a really nice pre-order system in place. Usually if you pre-order, it'll ship within the next week or whenever it comes in stock. So go into the links below. It really supports the channel. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can join my Patreon. Now, I don't have any special bonuses other than just some sneak previews that of things that I'm working on, videos that are going to come out. You get to see early access photos and stuff like that. Really impressive, Evan and Mondo and all the rest of the team over at 533. I'm going to be ordering another one. Great job.